Okay, this is uh, a little bit of a takeoff on my uh, plane and release by feel video, which has been the most popular one that, that I've put up there and the one that's helped people the most. And this is uh, part four on the importance of a gradual, natural release. And I'm gonna kind of use this uh, stick that I used in the plane and the release by feel video to illustrate how easy it is for your body to make that natural release and keep the club on plane and return it square to the ball. Whereas things like extending the arc, widening the arc, low and slow, holding the lag, coming inside out, all of that stuff uh, just will make your body contort in funny positions and make it difficult to square. Now, the reason why this is gonna illustrate it so well is when you're hitting a ball on the ground, gravity is actually helping you so it can mask some of the deficiencies in your swing because the club is gonna to wanna to fall down to where the ball is and kind of semi-correct some of your mistakes. Whereas when you're swinging way up here, gravity, if you're making too many mistakes and getting stuck or whatever, the club is going to drop because you're not gonna be swinging efficiently and the club is gonna to wanna to drop. That's why 99% of all people that I ever had try this shot in any of my exhibitions hit the stick about right here. You know, there are, there are all sorts of things that people will say in retort, in rebuttal, about, oh, well, people are used to swinging down there, la, 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 la. But the honest fact is, is that gravity is gonna wanna make the club go down, and the more efficiently you're swinging, the easier it is gonna be to keep the club up high and on level. So, as I showed in the plane and release by feel, Look at how natural this looks. Okay, my shoulders are continuing to rotate. There's a gradual setting of the hands and opening of the club face and a gradual unsetting of the hands and closing of the club face where the club will square at impact. And again, centrifugal force pulls your arms away from you as you generate speed and that will square the club for you, so to speak. Whereas, you know, swinging inside out, that's hard to square. Now watch how uncomfortable this looks. You get a lot of people doing this, and they think that's all great, widening the arc, low and slow, float load, okay? Widening that arc. But watch how uncomfortable that looks, especially in the tightness in my shoulders, when I try to do this on this level. Okay, you can see that there was some tightness here and my left shoulder wanted to go this way. Okay, this feels very uncomfortable and you see my shoulders don't turn in a natural fluid motion because there's reaching, reaching out away. And look at how uncomfortable this looks. Okay, whereas a natural position right here that looks very comfortable so it's this versus this okay even if you don't sway or pull your spine angle away I can feel the tightness in my left shoulder when I do that now that's on the backswing on the downswing I don't have to explain to you that coming too far from the inside out is not any good okay underneath the plane if you're holding the lag, no one really argues with me on that one either. But people argue with me that if your club is coming down on plane, holding the lag, adding lag, you know, and as I've said before, the lag is actually here and not this severe wrist angle, but I'll use that term to refer to that wrist angle. Minimizing this wrist angle, even if you keep it on plane, watch when I make this swing how tight my shoulders are and how my shoulders kind of have to whip and change directions in order to square the club from this severe position. So it's like, okay, that's a hard thing to do. And again, the, the detractors of, of what I say will say, well, you're kind of exaggerating. I'm really not. 
because I've been stuck in this over lag position for 15 years. So I understand what it feels like, how much pressure it puts on your wrists and forearms and on your shoulders at 130 and 140 miles per hour. You might not feel that tension big time when you're generating 90, 100, 110, but at 130 and 40, I can feel the stuck, tense position that doing this gets you in to, to square the club. And I'll do that again. It's hard, even if you're on plane, to go from here to there, okay? It doesn't look as severe when you're hitting the ball down below, which is, okay, that doesn't look as bad. But when you do it up here, you get stuck. Even though the club is on, people have told me, you're not stuck unless you're underneath the plane. Well, if you're lagging those hands too hard, creating that severe angle, you're stuck because you have to stand up or do something funny to go from here to there and it really puts a lot of pressure on your body and it makes it really really hard to be consistent and bringing that club into the ball the same way some people can do it but it's just not the easiest most efficient way to do it you can create some long drives doing that but it's punishing on your body and unless you're hitting balls for eight hours a day it's really really hard thing to time the easiest thing to time the easiest thing on your body is to create that natural rotation that will happen if you just allow it. Obviously, you don't want the cast because that will also put pressure on your wrist. But if you're making that nice rotation, starting from the top and in sync with your body, look at how easy it is to return that club to the same place every time. Okay? So, again, the natural release will allow you to turn and not get stuck, whether it's under the plane or on plane. It won't pull your body out of position, and it just won't get you in funky positions that you will have to recover from because it is a natural rotation, as I showed when I was turning with the basketball a couple of days ago.